Knowledge is power. And this is powerful stuff. Wellness Education Cannabis Advocates of Nevada present the Weekend 702 Nevada Cannabis News Hour with your host, Jen Solis. Over the next 60 minutes, we'll take an in-depth look at the cannabis reform revolution sweeping the nation. The phone lines are open at 731-1230. That's 731-1230. Or toll free. Toll free. 1-866-820-5528. That's 1-866-820-KLAV. Now, let's bring on the host. Here is Jen Solis. Welcome to Weekend 702, Nevada's Cannabis News Hour. This is Jennifer Solis, and I'm here in the studio with Kurt Dukoch, Raymond Fletcher, and Beach Baker. We don't have a guest this uh, this hour. We are going to talk about everything that's going on in Nevada and beyond. All right. Uh, let's start out with early voting. Early voting is going on right now. That's right. Early voting started, what, Saturday? This past Saturday. It started Saturday. I went down today. I was at the Clark County um, Commission be- building, the big, the big pyramid building, and it literally took me five minutes to go in and vote there was no one there i went in i gave him my name didn't even need a driver's license just go in give them your name they'll check and see if you're registered and then i walked right up to a booth and i voted it took me about five minutes because i've i've done my homework beforehand like everyone should and i've got my little sticker blue sticker says i voted yay See, I'm going to wait till election day because I really want to rock my sticker. Really? <laughs> no. Well, I was going to say I can rock it for a whole week, though. This this is true. Now, now, don't forget. Um, do you happen to know what the county website is so our listeners can go ahead and find out their location, the early vote? Should they choose? Well, I, early voting you can you can go to any of the early voting places, and they're usually like at Albertsons. Um, like I said, there was one at the government building. Um, uh, early I know a voting couple of LVACs. Uh, yeah, that's really? Uh, yes, there's a LVAC that offers it. I'm just not sure which one. I think Smith was listed, but also remember some of the Albertsons had closed, so people that used to early vote at Albertsons may go there and. There's nowhere to vote because they close. Well, what have you got, Kurt, there for early voting? Uh, let's see. It says where to find early voting sites. Uh, let's see. You can find it on the website or you can call 455-VOTE, 702-455-VOTE. Uh, they'll tell you uh, or on their website, which is ClarkCountyNV.gov under elections. So, if you don't know where to vote, you can uh, you can give them a call and ask them where their your nearest polling place is. Otherwise, it's generally near um, an elementary school that is in your in that is in your vicinity. If you're not going to early vote, if you're if you're just going to vote um, on what June fifth, then then you need to you need to go to your polling place. Otherwise, you're welcome to go to any of the early voting um, uh, stations. So everybody get out and vote because, you know, you can't, you can't complain about it if you don't take place in the process. You're absolutely right. And um, while, while Kurt's looking at the um, voter election, I want to double check that date because I think the date that you said was wrong. Uh, election day isn't on the 5th. 10th. It's the 10th. Yes. So you want to make sure we get accurate information out there, Jen. Oh, okay. Yeah, June 5th is the the marathon meeting with the county. Oh, that's why it's like embedded in my brain. Yeah, the beginning of the marathon. (laughs) Speaking of marathon. Yo, my gosh, you were at a marathon meeting for the city, for the city meeting for land use. A mini marathon. That meeting, oh my goodness, was 13 hours, 41 minutes, 42 minutes. And you know what held it up? What held it up was liquor. It was there was a big fight down on uh, for Fremont Street where they weren't they're not allowing the packaged liquor stores to sell different sizes of alcohol and there was some like huge fight beforehand. So the medical marijuana thing didn't even take that long. It was just the number in the agenda was like dead last or it, something. It was number 67. It was item number 67. 
out of 108 items, I want to say, I'm guesstimating, because, you know, they have, you know, the council statements, and then this, and then adjournment, all our different numbered items, but it was trailed to the end of the meeting, because they knew that it was going to not be contentious, but be a lively topic. So was it a lively topic? What, what, what changed, Raymond? I know you were there. Well, after the two and a half hours spent on liquor, <laughs> which <laughs> you, you felt like having a drink after two and a half hours of arguing about liquor, huh? I couldn't wait till it was over. But no, um, let me touch on that right quick. There oh, sure. aren't even any packaged liquor stores that they were referring to. These are little uh, gift shops. Oh, that gift shops that are selling alcohol. Okay. And that was a big to do about it because people and then they even did this little secret undercover video where they blacked out the guy recording the video's face, but they made sure to show everybody else in the video except the guy shooting it. They wanted wow. to sanitize that. But um so the city meeting lasted until you 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 texted me I think somewhere around 11 or midnight saying that the land use passed unanimously unanimously and see that's what was a surprise for for um mr fletcher here because um he i think that savros anthony basically was railing against cannabis in general saying that he wasn't gonna vote positively for any. anything related to marijuana and don't forget when we when we first started uh this at the city city level he was rallying all these spouting off all these inaccurate you know statistics and then are talking about oh the kids are going to get their hands on this and kids are going to do this and kids are going to do that when you have to be 18 or older to get your medical marijuana card or if you're under 18 with a parent's consent and i think a parent would know what's better for their child than uh the councilman. Well, that, what's interesting about that, if they're going to talk about pe- you know children getting their hands on the parents' medication, well, then why aren't there why aren't there padlocks on everybody's um, on everybody's um, cabinet medicine, medicine cabinet. cabinet in the bathroom? Ninety percent of kids, that's where they're getting like oxycontin and pills and stuff like that. It's from their parents and their parents' bathrooms. So if if you know, and it's much easier to conceal a pill than a joint. You're absolutely right. But now with these vape pens and everything, some of these kids are just sitting there vaping in school, on the bus, in class. It's 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 ridiculous. But for the meeting, the land use regulations, there was um amendment proposed by uh, Councilman Bob Coffin. Sure. And I'm proud to say that what he asked for his in his amendment all got passed unanimously. So the dispensaries do not need to be a standalone building, which is really awesome. Yes, you it know, is. Um, because what I would like to see, essentially, is somebody have their their grow, their um, production, and their dispensary all in one location. It saves on security. It saves on transportation. You don't have to worry about any of these things that Stavros is so worried about, you know, having everything in one location. But the funny thing was, after he hooted and hollered and railed against, you know, the demons of marijuana, the demons of cannabis. Um, he voted for it. Hmm. So, well, what does that tell you, uh, Kurt? I don't know. Uh, he might be, might be, maybe seeing the light. Maybe he's been having lunch with some people and talking to people, and maybe understanding that this is truly a medicine, and it is what the people of Nevada voted for back in two thousand, and it is it is our constitutional right. Well, you know, if he's had a change of heart, and I, I sincerely hope he's had a change of heart, um, you know, from a moral standpoint to where he said, you know what, before I said this and now I'm voting this way because because I think that community pressure or or, you know, maybe somebody took him to lunch or took him on a trip and started talking to him and said, hey, you know what, uh, the stuff you were quoting, by the way, is from the 60s. So nobody's going to believe you if you keep quoting this old stuff. So maybe here's some new information. So uh, whatever, 
whatever the situation is, uh, the reason that Savers Anthony, uh, pro Tim mayor, changed his mind, you know, I'm happy. I'm happy for it. There was also another development um, from city the city meeting where Carolyn Goodman suggested something for North Las Vegas. Yes, thanks for bringing that up. Uh, it was it was her suggestion. She stated that she's had uh, conversations with North Las Vegas Mayor uh, David Lee, John Lee, David Lee. Well, I, I can't remember the guy's name. I don't live in North Las Vegas. <laughs> she's having conversations with the gentleman about uh, having all types of grow operation in the north area. Um, I think you told me that area, but I couldn't remember the name. Well, the the area that they that. Uh, North Las Vegas, now we're, we're going from a, a city um, suggestion of Carolyn Goodman, our mayor of of city of Las Vegas, to North Las Vegas. North Las Vegas, their land use is, is allowing for grows to go out in apex with no um, special, special use permit. They special can go use. On a conventional business licensing. So they can go under a conventional business licensing out in Apex. The only situation that I worry about with Apex, or, or it, there is a there is a concern with Apex, is that there's not a lot of the power and the water infrastructure to support these buildings. And so you're going to have to pour some money into getting the power and the water and stuff uh, in place. So, I mean, where it's not going to cost you and be a hassle on one end, it might be a hassle on 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 a different uh, on a different uh, way for North Las Vegas. Well, well, here here's a good question. Well, first and foremost, you know, um, our 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 dear mayor, you know, she can't issue an edict to any other community and have them abide by her will. So that's true. If, she can make a suggestion, right? If they choose to do this, you know, all good for them. Number two, how these communities give uh, tax breaks and tax incentives to all these kinds of industries to bring them into their community to create jobs and everything, since it is legal for medical marijuana under Nevada state law, will medical marijuana businesses receive that same incentive? And if not, will those businesses then join together and file a class action lawsuit against the state for... You know, treating businesses differently. Yeah. Well, I mean, that is that is a concern. I mean, there's there right now what's going on with Clark County, and we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, you know, about people, you know, giving getting their just desserts or, or what's due to the Clark to city or to North Las Vegas and paying these fees and these fines and and all of that other type of stuff. I mean, you have to you have to be wary of. Um, what they're doing. I mean, so, you know, they should really look out at, at what they're doing. Uh, the next city meeting, uh, if you'd like to attend for the city of Las Vegas is on June 4th. It's on June 4th. Does anybody have a time for that? Regular meeting um, starts at nine o'clock unless they have a redevelopment meeting, which starts at eight thirty, which they did the day they had the marathon meeting, have redevelopment and then so what you can do is you can go onto the city of uh, Las Vegas, their website, and it says their meetings and agendas. Look on the meetings and the agendas for June 4th and we look at your agenda item. So when you look at your agenda item, that kind of, kind of gives you the time and the timing. If it's anything over 20, maybe 20, 25, 30, it may be afternoon before your your item ever gets heard. And if it's in the 60s, what was it like, what, 10, 9, 10, Raymond? <laughs> yeah, it was, <laughs> it was late. But, but also, when you look at the agenda, check and make sure, check and see if they have any ceremonial matters. Those can sometimes take upwards to an hour, an hour and a half. Mm -hmm. So you want to see what kind of presentations and whatnot are you. You know, it's good to watch, and I'm glad we have the opportunity to watch it on TV. Mm -hmm. I just don't want to sit in council chambers for another seven hours. Well, you know, I, I think it's really interesting, and it's been quite an education sitting in council chambers and see how how, how the um, uh, the city council and the Clark County commissioners and North Las Vegas, all of those people interact with each other. It kind of gives you also clues to their uh, character, um, you know. So some of them are really good to, to sit through. But I'll tell you, one time we sat through a, a city meeting, and um, for an hour and a half, they talked about Jimmy John's. 
<laughs> you know. Ooh, Jimmy John's. Now, see, if Jimmy John's was in City Hall. Well, that's that, what they were talking about. Putting, getting one, putting in, one in City Hall. Yeah, we were talking you know. about during that 13 hour meeting because there's absolutely nowhere to eat around there after 1.30. So, really, it, it, really, it, it was that, kind of ironic too. They were they were giving McDonald's an award also in that morning too for so about like, nutrition. So yeah, yeah for for providing meals on the first day of school to to kids who who couldn't afford who breakfast couldn't afford or breakfast. <laughs> so mm. yeah, so I thought that was a little bit ironic. Um, we are coming up on a break here, and um, in about two minutes. But w- let's just well, talk about. I also found the uh, the list of the sites for everywhere you can vote early, and I did just post it to our Facebook page at WeCan702 on Facebook, and it takes you right to all of the sites all across the, the county that you can go and you can vote early at. Okay, it's fantastic. So- Thanks a lot, Kurt. You know, it's really, like, like Jen said, and uh, the effort Kurt's putting forward, it is really important to get out and vote. You know, like Jen said, you cannot sit there and complain about what's going on in your community you know, great example. Let's look at the sheriff's race. You mm-hmm. have someone that's, you got people that are saying that they're going to stop the raids on patients. Yep. And then you have people that don't mind kicking in your doors with the stormtroopers. That's yeah. true. That's so. true. I, one of the people that I was listening to, I think it was, um, well, I think it was Larry Burns. He was saying that the reason he joined the police force is because there was no wars going on. Yeah, there was no wars for him to go fight in, so he decided to be join join the police force. That's not somebody I want running my sheriff's department. <laughs> well, you know the thing is, is that then he put us. Then he was in like a squat, a SWAT or command that is over in that central command over off of Twain and um, Swinson, like Twain and Swinson. If you've never been down to Twain and Swinson, he said that his that the, one of the things that he wanted was that uh, pizza delivery guys would be able to go into that neighborhood, and he thought it was successful that that he finally got pizza delivery guys that would deliver over there. And if you've never been in that area, it is a pretty bad area. But still, you you've got to look at these guys that are running for sheriff and look at their motivation. Is their motivation to be a bully boy, or is their motivation to protect and serve? Okay, I think on that note, we're going to go on a break, and we'll be back in a few minutes. Locally owned and operated TSI, Total Safety Incorporated, has kept our community safe since 1998. We provide superior services offering professional installation, local fire and burglar alarm monitoring, and the fastest response times in Las Vegas. We also offer armed and unarmed security, video security systems, access control, and fire safety installation and service. All of your security needs are covered. Call us at 702-967-0000. That's 702-967-0000 or visit us at TSIVegas.com. Finally, Nevada medical marijuana dispensaries are opening, but you must have your medical marijuana card to get inside. Call the friendly team at Karma Holistic Health Foundation, toll free, 855-420-1110 or visit GetMedicalMarijuanaNow.com. Karma Holistic Health Foundation will give you legal access to medical marijuana. All veterans receive a discount, 855-420-1110 or visit GetMedicalMarijuanaNow.com. The Vaughn Dank Group offers turnkey solutions for all your cannabis needs, bringing transparency and responsibility to a young budding industry. Helping patients by producing the cleanest, safest, and most potent medicines and infusibles possible. The Von Dank Group is a design, management, and consulting corporation with over 30 years of industry experience and knowledge of the dispensary, edibles, infusible kitchen, and large-scale cultivation of cannabis manufacturing facilities. Let the Von Dank Group help you grow your cannabis business from seed to green. www.vondank.com Welcome back. That sound indicates it's time for our 420 moment. Today on our 420 moment, we're gonna we're gonna honor Robert Walker. Robert Walker was a uh, a local advocate here and uh, just overall a freedom fighter is how I'd like to probably talk about him. Um, Robert just passed this last weekend. He was also a veteran. Um, really great guy overall. I was going to say, I, I met Robert Walker uh, quite a while ago. He was one of the first people to join um, our, our meetup 
on fa- and our Facebook, I saw him out at all of the um, protests and different activist, um, different activist um, situations that were going on in town. Um, here, here's a quote from his daughter. It says, my dad dedicated himself to educating people and to making things better. He believed in being honest and good and worked diligently to get others to do the same. He was a firecracker, to say the least. And for those of you who knew him, you know what I mean. My dad taught me to question the status quo and to think for myself. That's a legacy that lives on in his grandchildren. He taught me to be honest, and that is really the best policy. Those of you who know me know well that I took that to heart. Um, she's truly honored by the outpouring of messages that are on his Facebook page, and she's proud to know that the positive impact that he was having. And I hope that the members of our natural rights continue to work th- to make things better. Robert was in town for for quite a while, and every time I saw him at at a you know an activist meeting, um, he always came up and you know told me hi, and and we talked about different. Uh, situations that were going on in town and he wasn't just uh, like a rabble rouser and and somebody you know somebody to always have a negative thing to say he always had really positive things and how and how to fix stuff and if you were a buzzard he'd tell you you're a buzzard so our 420 moment uh goes out to robert walker and to all those activists that knew him we salute you robert all right, so we we're, we we let have, uh, someone on the phone. Oh, we do have we have someone on the phone. We have someone named Sussman on the phone. Yeah, Hi. Sussman. Hi, Sussman. Um, what's your question or concern? Uh, well, I got a chumps conundrum, and uh, I know you don't know what that means, um, but uh, you claim to be for uh, medical marijuana. Yes, I am for medical marijuana. Mm-hmm. And yet, um, Jim and them was taken off of this show. Uh, for breaking edge, when you yourself have been quoted saying, "Smoke weed, hail Satan." Jim. Uh, yes, uh, Jim Scampoli. Jim was never on our show. I uh, I'm fairly sure he was. Uh, what time is it? It's four twenty, right? No, I'm I'm honestly, Sussman. Jim was has never been on our show. I don't know who you're talking about. Uh, yeah, uh, Jim Scampoli is the uh, walker right in the pussy guy. No, we ha- we know, sir. Sir, I think you're talking about a different show. This is a weekend 702 Nevada Cannabis News. Check our archives if you don't believe me. Jim has never been on our show. Um, I welcome cutting edge people. You know, I'm um, I'm cutting edge person myself. I do believe in medical cannabis and and its uses. So we've had members of the DEA on here and everybody. So. Yeah, I'm not really sure who you're talking about, Sussman, but, you know, check our archives. I've never taken anybody off the show. The only person that uh, was taken off the show or, or left the show was Michael McCullough, and that was under threat of a federal uh, indictment. They said they were going to throw him in jail if he continued to, to uh, you know, um, to speak on uh, to speak, speak on, on, this. on cannabis. And, and that's a First Amendment issue as far as I'm concerned. So um, I'm sorry about any type of mix-up, Sussman, but that wasn't us. Uh, let's go on and talk about Clark County. Clark County's got some meetings coming up on June 3rd, 4th, and 5th, and those are for potential dispensary owners. And then on June 20th, they're going to have a meeting for just uh, the growers and production. And it may it may stretch to um, like the 18th, 19th, and 20th for Clark County. June 3rd's meeting starts at noon, and these are for potential dispensary owners to give their six-minute speech on why they should be a dispensary owner in Clark County. Um, you know, to, to speak to another um, subject on Clark County, did you see Marla McDade Williams on the John Ralston show? I did not. That. Oh, my goodness. Marla McDade Williams um, is our state leader, leader of the medical marijuana program here, and she was um, very animate in the fact that they are uh, the state is not going to accept 
any applications from any municipalities. They are accepting them for, um, from the potential owners themselves. So all that work that they're doing with Clark County and Clark County is only sending up 18, they can't do it. They're not sending up 18 to the state. Marla McDade Williams just put a trump on that. And you know the reason she did that? I'll tell you the reason she did that. She did that because Clark County is stealing the state's money. Because if they're only sending up 18 applications, then the state only gets money for those 18 dispensary applications and whatever Clark County sends up there. You see, so that's why Marla McDade Williams said, oh, no, 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 no. We don't care if you've been pre-vetted by Clark County. We want the applications from the dispensary owners or the growers or the... um, production people themselves so we don't care if you've been pre-vetted by clark county good all very well and good for you so we are going to waste two and a half days doing what exactly well see that that is actually the question the question is from some dispensary owners and from potential growers to me is why am i doing this and i said well guess what you're doing this for due diligence You're walking in there to Clark County. You're playing the game that they want to play. You're doing every little hoop trick that they want you to do. And you're sending it to the state also. Without having any uh, certification of or, um, you know, certainty if your application is going to be accepted or not. Well, that's true. It, you know, Clark County may have wanted to save people fees and stuff like that. But what basically it seems is like that Clark County's, you know, picking their little cherries out of the group or whoever their little friends are or whatever the situation is and not giving the state a choice. I know why. So Marla <laughs> McDade Williams said basically, no, 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 you no, know, you're going to send your applications to us. We are going to say you know, you know what's going on with them with your fees, so they're not going to be, you know, jerked out of fees, and then it's going to go back down to Clark County. And if you've already got that land use taken care of, then bully for you. Well, first, if Clark County did not do the power grab that they did and yank dispensary licenses from other communities because they overpromised themselves, they wouldn't find themselves in this position. But no, unfortunately, people throughout our government decided that they don't have to follow the rules that the state sent out, that our elected officials wrote the law, got everything going. Now, here's what should have been done. And and please tell me if this makes any sense. And I really try not to make any sense. But shouldn't you have applied to the state first? got that approval on a state level, and then go through the county's application process or the municipalities. That sounds like like a logical, um, you know, order of things. But the thing is, is that if if it was done that way, then, you know, then the state would have their money and everybody would be happy, and then Clark County can do all their meetings. But in Clark County doing these pre-vetting meetings and, you know, and all these, uh, you know, uh, um, presentations of what you're going to do in six minutes, no less. You're expected, if you're going to open a dispensary or a grow or a production, you've got six minutes to tell Clark County why you should do this. That's not bad. That's not bad. Because, I know. Look, you've Normally already given three. Them. You say you only need three? <laughs> Normally, you oh. only get three there, you know, so they're doubling right. the time that they're giving you. Yeah, they're you. giving your time, and then they're giving people that are in opposition to you, what is it, two or three minutes, and then giving you an, an, another minute at the end to respond. It's it's really weird. You get you, you get to do your presentation. Mm-hmm. Then you have, wh- okay, let me back up. They're doing it by townships. Okay, these townships are on this day. These townships are on that day. And then these townships are on the third and last day. Mm-hmm. So that way, you know, you're not there every day should you not have to if you're opposed to John Smith having a dispensary next door to your hair salon or whatever it is. Mm-hmm. So you have your opportunity. They already have your business plan. You go make your six-minute presentation. Then John Smith or whomever comes and says, well, I don't want this for whatever reason. 
mm-hmm. then you have the opportunity to come back and dispute whatever Mr. Smith said or whatever. Well, that's how court also works. If you if you go in and you make and you make a uh, you know if you're you make a case in court, then then you get they can send an answer back, and then you can send yeah you know your response to that answer. Um, but I mean, so that's basically kind of how court works. Um, not that I have personal knowledge in that, but um, so Clark County's <laughs> Clark County's appoint uh, Clark County's days are the third, fourth, and fifth. It starts on the third at noon. You can check the website for the starting times of the fourth and fifth, and that's June. Uh, and on the twentieth, like the eighteenth through the twentieth, that's when the people that are growing. Or are going to um, have the chance to to give their presentation, which makes no sense. Mm-hmm. I'll tell you why. Okay. Let's say I have an application in for a dispensary for all three. Okay. My business plan is incorporated into all three. Okay. I can't present one part of my business plan without presenting the other. So if you're you're in a dispensary and they're gonna they're gonna ask you so where are you getting your medication from you say well you know what right next door of my potential grow which Ali will gladly tell you about on the 18th through the 20th <laughs> exactly so and so those people have 12 minutes yeah. yes but so those are the ones that they should have been doing together mm-hmm. you know again common sense well there you go. <laughs> Well, um, let's see. We did our city. We did Clark County, North Las Vegas. Did we have any additional meetings for North Las Vegas? I have a quick question. About North Las Vegas, <laughs> Raymond? Mm, no, <laughs> just about Clark County in general. Oh, sure, sure. When do um, campaign finance reports come out? Well, you know, I think there's a website that it's called Transparent Nevada. Because you can Nevada. look at Transparent Nevada and find out all the I money think people that's took in. for the people that are employees of the state. Yeah. Oh, okay. But I th- don't they have campaign contributions on there, I th- too? I think that's a different side. But my, my point is, Jen. Yes? It would be interesting to see whose campaign coffers have gotten a little thicker since the medical marijuana applications. Have. I'm just... Well, you know, I know I how the venture. game is played. I'm not stupid. I know how the game is played, and I'm putting it out there. I'm saying it. Well, I would, I would say I would venture to guess that um, a bunch of people probably contributed to Tick Seagerblooms just because he uh, helped push the bill through. I, I, and that out of gratitude or whatever right. reason. And, that, and that's why I specified Clark County itself. Okay. And not on a state level. Well, a lot of people don't know this, but uh, Chris Gilchuliani, one of our Clark County Commissioners Democratic here, is one of the originators of this bill 13 years ago that allowed uh, medical marijuana in the state of Nevada. When she was in the state house. What? Well, she was in the state house at the yes. time. Yes, she was. Yes, she was in the state house at the time, and now she is um, one of our Clark County commissioners. And so, and so she has a long history with this and being a supporter of this. And so, I mean, that's pretty much why. Well, that's why every time I see her, I go, "Thanks, Chris," because you know, Gil Chiliani is really long. June Chiliani. <laughs> June Chiliani. Yes, I, I I I did a thing where. I, I read it out how it sounded, did the whole phonetic thing, and June Kill Lee Ani. Ah, oh, Chris G. To know uh, yep. to those of us that know her well, <laughs> even people on the on the city commissions call her that. Okay, all right. So our next subject, we are going to have our four twenty pool parties this summer. You can check out our pool parties on Meetup dot com. And we should have a list of dates by Friday of all of our pool parties. And what those are is basically their potlucks. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> their potlucks and their pool parties. We charge admission because the um, the homeowner uh, char- you know, charges us to use the space. So we do charge admission. I think it's like 10 bucks. And But they're potlucks. That means that you can bring your food. You can barbecue there. Um, you can bring your alcohol or whatever else that y- you want to bring. No glass bottles, please. And come out and party with us and hang. So they're just like kickbacks. Um, 
So check out our website for more information on that at www.wecan702.org. You can also see it at our meetup, www.meetup.com forward slash wecan702. Yeah, all the, the events that get posted on Meetup will go directly to the, the Weekend702.org page. Uh, if you join the Meetup page, which is free to join, you will also get emails about all of our events. So if you use your email, it's a, it's a great tool to have. You'll get a reminder about a week before every event saying, hey, you're invited to this. Come on out and join us. So. Wasn't there event an event coming up that you said wasn't going to happen because it was too hot, or are you still That's, bouncing no. around? No, I'm not bouncing that around. <laughs> that just done died. Will you please share? I just want. I'm gonna thank you for reminding me. I'm gonna share that with you guys because it's too hot. We have a campsite at a group campsite in Valley of Fire. And um, I believe it's on fire right now. I believe Valley of Fire is on fire right Sweet. now, not literally. But <laughs> but the thing is, is that it's 95 during the day and it's supposed to be like 65 or 68 at night. But the thing is, is it's just so miserable out in the heat that I think that we should move our camp this weekend to Mount Charleston. Yeah, I believe we're going to do it up in Max Canyon instead, up there at the group camping on Mount Charleston. It'll be a little bit cooler. Um, I apologize to anybody who may have trouble getting up there. It is a little tougher to get up there than group campsite, too, but it's going to be worth it because of the, it's just going to be so much cooler. I think the high the is on, on Mount Charleston is 78 degrees during the day. So if you are prepared for the heat and to go heat camping, then I'm sorry. You can use the site by yourself in Valley of Fire but we're going to go to Max Canyon or, or somewhere up on Mount Charleston because 78 is a daytime high on Mount Charleston but you need to be prepared because it's in the 50s at night. Well actually Ooh. on Friday it's supposed to be 91 of a daytime high with a low of 64 even up on the mountain so imagine if it's 91 degrees up on Mount Charleston what it's going to be in Valley of Fire. Oh my goodness. See I would never last. I would never last. Um, the Y'all act like it's hot. You live in the desert for crying out loud. I moved out here by choice and I'm loving it, you know? I do love the heat. I love the heat, but the thing is is that I love the heat. I love the heat during the daytime. At night when I need to sleep, I can't sleep in, in ninety five or ninety eight degree heat. It's just not possible. It's like it's so damn loathing. Hot. <laughs> <laughs> That's the truth. That's the truth. I'm melting. I'm melting. I um, love the summer heat. It's the cat's meow. It is. It does feel really good during the day. Um, our next thing that's coming up is First Friday, and that is the following Friday. So yeah, we'll Friday, June 6th is uh, the next First Friday. And this First Friday, we're going to be celebrating Hemp History Week because it falls right in the middle of Hemp History Week. So we're going to have free ice water out there for anybody who wants to come out and brave the heat with us. You're going to have nice, cool ice water and shade. Uh, we also have lots of lots of hemp samples to hand out. We have hemp shelled hemp seeds. We have some Dr. Bronner soaps. And I was uh, contacted by another company today sending us some more stuff. So there's going to be uh, all sorts of education about hemp and hemp products to try and nice cool ice water so everybody needs that speaking of hemp up. didn't something just go on in kentucky where they released the hemp seeds to kentucky officials this was a big story last week um it was about uh the hemp seeds that were held up by impounded. kentucky's yeah. Yeah, impounded and they were held up by kentucky's uh, agriculture department um, no, or no, no, they were they were finally released to Kentucky's Agriculture Department for experimental plantings and marking a limited comeback for the non-intoxicating cousin to marijuana. The seeds were from Italy, and they drew so much suspicion from the federal drug officials that they were unceremoniously unloaded from a UPS truck and then weighted again by state agriculture officials. The shipment featured 13 seed varieties and came up to 286 pounds. The thing about this is that this is non-THC, non-psychoactive hemp seeds. Um, we're going to have some hemp seeds out at First Friday so that you can see them for yourselves. And these are from Canada. We, we have to buy them. Yeah, we have to buy them in Italy. America imported from Canada because we can't even grow the product ourselves. Even though George Washington, the father of our country, grew hemp and cannabis. But don't forget, our government bought, what, a thousand pounds of marijuana? 
Oh, yeah, yeah. But will not allow. And it was the agriculture secretary in Kentucky that was actually suing the government to release them. Well, they, they finally re- finally released it without m- much of a to do, um, and we'll finish the story up at just a, in just a minute when we're back from our break. So join us, re- join us for Nevada's Cannabis News. See you in a minute. Do you need help getting your Nevada medical marijuana card? Doctor Reefer is now accepting new patients. There are no medical records required. We have a doctor on staff to give you a thorough physical examination. There is a 99% approval rate for patients. They also have a money-back guarantee. If you don't qualify, you don't pay. Free consultation is available. Call 702-428-0000. 702-428-0000. To get your Nevada Medical Marijuana card today. Weekend 702 is a Nevada cannabis community. We are a 501c3 nonprofit that meets in Southern Nevada. We are a social group that started in Las Vegas for patient support. We've been active in the community for over five years. If you'd like to join us on any of our events or parties, please contact us through Facebook at Weekend 702 on Meetup at www.meetup.com forward slash WeCan702. Our website is www.wecan702.org. Be a part of the Nevada Cannabis Reform Revolution. Please join us and donate today. You're listening to the Nevada Cannabis News Hour, produced by We Can, the wellness education cannabis advocates of Nevada. We Can is a 501c3 nonprofit. If you're interested in sponsoring us, donating, or advertising on this radio show, please contact our advertising department at 702-218-5226 or Kurt, K-U-R-T, at WeCan702.org. Welcome back, everybody. This is Jennifer, and we are on Weekend 702, Nevada's Cannabis News Hour. If you'd like to give us a call and and talk about any cannabis issues in Las Vegas, you can give us a call at 702-731-1230 or 866-820-5528. This is KLAV, 1230 AM, and we were talking about Kentucky Um, Hemp. Kentucky Hemp. Kentucky Hemp. Well, June is National Hemp Month, or where is it International Hemp Month? It's, it's National, he- uh, National Hemp History Week. It's the first week of June. National Hemp History Week, and we were talking about the fact that Kentucky is now going to be growing hemp. Uh, I actually know someone who has bought a, um, they bought a, a plant to, out in Kentucky so that they could and they got a decor a hemp decor so that when they start growing hemp they can they can make um cloth out of it and his name is bruce perlwin and he owns hemp inc for those of you that don't know bruce he was the uh what was he the 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 san francisco smuggler san francisco smuggler he he, they said that he supplied most of the marijuana to the bay area in the 80s yeah, nice they, guy. Nice guy. Yeah, they estimate he supplied 75% of the uh, the, the, the marijuana for the uh, hate and Ashbury movement going on back in the 60s. Not only is he a nice guy, <laughs> but he served his time, and now he's still a believer. He is working within the hemp industry, and he... Um, he just bought this decor machine, and he's going to be growing hemp in Kentucky. He is based here out of Las Vegas. Just got married, and congratulations, Bruce, and I'm glad that you're doing a lot of stuff, um, you know, all over America still with hemp. Uh, we have a caller on the line, uh, Dr. Stephen Fry. Dr. Fry? I'm here. And this is our friend, Dr. Fry. How are you today? It is, and I am so thrilled with your show. I love listening to it on Tuesdays, and I just want your listeners to know that there is one candidate for governor uh, in the great state of Nevada who supports total legalization like Colorado and Washington, and also supports uh, re-legalizing hemp in the state of Nevada because the United States government is finally coming to its senses uh, with the hemp also. So we need to get on board. We should have been first. I tried last year in the legislature. I was we had, with you. Uh, plenty of votes. We just uh, we were just killed by Governor Sandoval, 
And mm-hmm. so uh, I'm back uh, running against him because we have the worst governor in the nation. We have the worst education and the worst hospitals and the worst mental health and the worst nursing homes and the worst public health. Well, that means you've got the worst governor. So, well, I, I uh, will tell you. Doctor. We can fix these things, and I'm a strong believer in marijuana both medically and it's the safest recreational drug in the world. Well, I will tell you that I personally voted today, Dr. Fry, and um, I kept that in mind. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. But uh, we've got a long ways to go, but we can do it. And this, it's the one tax that the voters of this state have overwhelmingly supported in the Retail Association of Nevada poll. Nevadans hate taxes, except the marijuana tax. Every other tax they have, they have been against, and that's why we can't get anything passed. And that's why we have the worst schools and the worst hospitals and the worst mental health all of which have gotten worse under Sandoval's administration. But you guys are out there fighting the good fight, and my good friend Michael McAuliffe uh, has been an activist in this area for years, and we miss him at this time, and he's always in our heart and prayers. And uh, we, can turn this, we can turn this state around with marijuana because we are, the, we are the party state of the nation. And it should have been first here, but at least let's get it done now as soon as possible and not wait for another two or three or four years where we then become the follow-up, and uh, Denver has seen like a 12% increase in its tourist trade since they have increased, uh, since they have legalized. And we cannot afford to lose that. This is the backbone of our uh, of our state. Well, Dr. So Fry, again, do I you... want to thank you guys for your persistence and your education of the public on this issue, and I uh, really appreciate everything you're doing. Okay, well, before you go, Dr. Fry, I'd like to um, put it out there to our viewers. Uh, you know, what's a website that they can go and they can... The website, thank you very much. My website is Fry, F-R-Y-E-4, number 4, Nevada, N-E-V-A-D-A dot com. F-R-Y-E number 4, Nevada dot com. That's awesome. So you guys yep, go and... And we've got all the stuff up there. It's got all my uh, my information. I have been a marijuana activist now for more than 10 years. I wrote a book about it. Uh, it's just incredible the lies that the drug warriors continue to tell. Uh, the, 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 the government has been lying about this now for more than 40 years. It's not an addictive drug. It's not a gateway drug. It's not a dangerous drug. It's the safest drug there is. When I give talks to doctors and medical students, I tell them, anyone that can provide me documentation of one death, for marijuana alone, I'll give you 50 bucks. And that shows you how far back I've been doing this, because back in the old days, 10 years ago, 50 bucks meant something. Now it doesn't. <laughs> I've never had anybody been able to document one death for marijuana alone. It is without question. Dr. Fry, over the top, the prescription or recreational drug in history. Dr. Fry, I, I will agree with you that marijuana is completely safe. Cannabis is completely safe. But there is one documented death from um, cannabis, and it was because a guy was driving in the car, and there was a bale of weed behind him, and he hit the brakes, and the and the bale of weed broke his neck. Uh, <laughs> oh, well, that's not the. That's like, that's like there's, there's, been, there's been many deaths. There's been many deaths by the DEA shooting people for possession of cannabis. That's true. That's, that's not right. A, that's not cannabis pharmacological death. That's that's Absolutely. one of the most dangerous things and there is a about it. There's bunch of those it. accidental things, but I'm talking about an actual pharmacological death. You know, alcohol kills 88,000 a year. We have tons of death from uh, prescription opiates every year, accidental and intentional overdoses. Uh, we need to get smart, and, and the Netherlands has 40 years of success. Uh, Portugal now has 13 years of success. None of them are talking about going back. They all realize that when you legalize, not only do alcohol deaths go down, domestic violence goes down, child abuse goes down, rape goes down, Saturday night barroom fights go down. All your crime statistics get better. It's incredible. You're absolutely right. And, Dr. Fry, we really wish you good luck at the Democratic primary on June 10th. want to make sure that... uh, Everybody has that information. That's F R Y E, the number four, Nevada, N E V A D A dot com. Exactly. Fantastic. Thank you very much, Dr. Fry. Yeah, we appreciate it very much. Early voting has already started. You know, as they yep. say in Chicago, vote early and vote often. <laughs> That's uh, true. Vote early and vote often. <laughs> Thank you so much. I continue to listen. I'll call in again. You've got a great show. Keep up the good work, guys. Thanks, Thank Dr. You very Fry. Much. He's absolutely right. I mean,. And I don't know if this is karma coming back to bite or whatnot, mm-hmm. but we as a nation, we have lost this drug war. Yeah. Kids, as you said earlier, have easy access to the parents' cabinets. 
And you look at look at some of the funny things in the news. Uh, a man stripped. Uh, this guy recorded on camera. A man stripping down naked, driving in the sunroof of a woman's vehicle. He wasn't on medical marijuana. <laughs> what was he on? I'm afraid to ask. <laughs> God only knows. You don't have people breaking people's homes still in there. 30, 50, 60 inch television to go get them a little uh, nug. Well, I would say the only time that I uh, that I ever came across um, like um, a crimes, I guess, when it comes to cannabis, is stealing your parents' weed, <laughs> either or, st- or your sisters, or your or, yeah, or, or you the find it because it's not easily placed in a medicine cabinet like everything else. <laughs> I was going to say, Kurt used to have a problem with his parents stealing his. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Um, let's talk about health insurance. Health insurance does not pay for medical cannabis. They just say no to cannabis patients. They say no to other... Uh, there, so there's people that have pain and other chronic symptoms. They cannot get their treatment covered um, with their insurance as many as much as a thousand dollars a month um you know for some people's medication it's basically insurance is reluctant to cover it in part because of the conflicting laws although the 21 states in the united states have approved it for medical use the drug's still outlawed by the federal government in most of the states most of the insurance companies have guidelines that are nationwide and they are not um they're not giving their approval for for this drug because it's not FDA approved. Marinol is FDA approved and it does contain the synthetic version of THC, but it doesn't have the CBDs. It doesn't have the cannabidiol. It doesn't have any of the other uh, chemical components that make cannabis so good in a whole. Yeah, and let's not forget that it doesn't even work for most of the people who try it because it is missing all that stuff. And we've also seen what people on synthetic weed, hey, that's what that dude was probably on, that synthetic marijuana when he climbed in that sunroof. Well, you know, a a lot of these problems with the FDA also have to do, and the DEA, have to do with a thing called chiraling enantiomers. Um, What that means is that you can go and make up a synthetic component of any drug, and until the DEA catches up with you, it's legal. That's what was happening with the K2 and the spice and um, all of the different types of synthetic marijuana is the reason that they were legal for like a minute. You remember that spice everybody was smoking? It's like legal THC and it was all very strong. And it was legal for a time until the DEA catches up with these drugs. And so every year you see chemists come out with this this. Uh, chemical signature and what they do is they just flip it that's called a chiraling enantiomer and that means that the drug is legal until until the dea identifies that chemical signature and makes that chemical signature um illegal i did not know that yeah it's the wonders of chemistry Um, and so basically a lot of these different health insurances are not not going to cover those types of things that are not FDA approved. So these drugs that are just um, different, just a little chemically different, are not FDA approved, of course. And, and in the next year or so, then the DEA goes in and says, okay, well, they're not legal anymore. Well, maybe someone will step up. Look, Colorado started the first medical marijuana well marijuana banking system That's because true. banks wouldn't accept it maybe someone will step up because you have cancer patients you have soldiers with ptsds you have grandmothers that have ailments that aren't going to smoke i mean that's true that's true um you know i also have some news that there is a bank in nevada that will be, uh, that will take your application if you're a dispensary and will take your money. And if you want to find out what bank it is, you need to go on our Meetup website and join up and become a member of Meetup. And I'll put that information in our discussions group about how you can bank if you're a dispensary in Nevada. So let's see what happens to our membership now. Fantastic. <laughs> all right, you guys. I want you guys all to take care of each other and watch out for each other. And together we can do it. Join us next Tuesday from 4 until 5 where we talk about everything cannabis. Thanks, guys. Thanks for joining me, Kurt, Ray, also Beach. See you next week. See you next week. See you next week.